My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Slice and Dice 3.0. We're going to be playing Alternate, finally! All heroes are leveled up or down versions of existing heroes. So I don't know what the base difficulty of this mode is going to be, so I'm going to start with hard. We've got three choices of party layout here. We have basic, we have greens, which removes both our red and blue heroes, so our healer and our mage. Uh, in order to add two green heroes, and then Magical, which has two red characters, no yellow, and no gray, so we lose a lot of our shielding, but we do get a lot of mana gain through our two red characters and one blue character. I want to take greens because I really, really, really want to see a lot more of the greens. I think this is going to be a great way to do so. Okay, choose a curse. Add.armon.c4a. So, this is a randomized monster that can be added to every fight. Okay, cool. So, the curse being able to generate itself randomly has resulted in this. Uh, and it is a character that has two signs that do three damage, two signs that do four damage, eliminate, and two signs that do two damage alone. How hard would that be to kill? It's five damage that I have to dedicate to it every fight, but that that very quickly becomes b basically nothing. Uh, hero dot guilt, all heroes add guilt to all signs. If this is lethal, I die. So unless I use mana specifically to get the ending kill, my unit dies. Not over the moon about that. I could also go with something like skulk during the first turn plus one to enemy sides. Monster right, all monsters have plus two pips on the right most side. You know what? No, I'm going to go with the randomized one. Why? Because it's randomized. I'm not going to make the strategic decision here. I'm going to make the decision to look at a new thing. Ooh. Okay, so our base characters here are Presence, and I've got two copies of Presence. We've also got Prince, Dabbler. Oh, so, uh, hang on. So their level has been inserted into their name rather than one of the vowels. So we have Prowonsense, Prowonsense, Prowonce, Dwumbla, <laughs> Bright. Uh, all of them level one characters, uh, variants of others. Brute would usually be level two. Dabbler would usually be level two. Prince would be level three. Presence, I think these two are level two, but I'm not certain yet. Oh, wow. Actually, it might be really good that we've got two copies of Presence because their ability, or ability trait rather, uh, is on pick, gain a random tier one item and two random tier zero junk items. Junk items are usually bad, but oftentimes there is a way to negate the bad thing about them and then just benefit from them. So here we have the wooden armor, it's a zero tier. It gives you two extra max HP, but negative one pip to all sides. Here's an example. Boom. Presence doesn't have pips on any of their sides, so that's just two max HP for you. Twiddle. Swap the top side with the bottom side. That's completely useful. There are situations where you will want to affect the side that is on the bottom of your die, but you've only got items that affect the top side of your die. So that's great, but not relevant right now. Big shield. Replace the left side with shield four. I think like it'd be a good idea to give that to one of the presences just to give me a little bit more diversity of things I'm capable of accomplishing. Scar plus five to empty max HP. This should be given to a character who's going to take damage. Reason being, if they're taking damage on the first round and they have Scar, I can defend them with heal and shield too and heal them at the same time, so it becomes very efficient. Scoundrel stash. Scoundrel only. Plus one pip to the left two sides. Cool, but obviously can't use it. And scissors. Add death wish and pain to the rightmost side. Times two to its effect if you're dying this turn, and you also take N damage, N being the size of the effect. Okay, I'm gonna give this scar to uh, Bright, because if I can heal Bright at any point, I also increase their range of ability to stun. And then it's fight time. Mm. 
some good armor already. I'll take the defense on Prince. Unfortunately, all of the presences decide to roll nothing this entire time. Okay, so the Dibbler is going down at the moment. I can save them by defending the Bright and then taking out the Thorn, which is otherwise targeting the Dibbler. Excellent. I will happily take a stunning side this turn because I don't expect I'm capable of developing 10 full damage to take out these enemies. Uh, engage doesn't make sense right now because I don't have any damage signs that I'm currently showing. So I will re-roll away from that even knowing that it was unlikely to give me anything more. Um, let's burst that B and then defend the presence on the top side, the only one that was going to be taking damage that turn. I'm happy to slow roll things with the the Brute every available turn. No problem with doing that. Uh, let's keep the Engage. And also the Death Wish side. There we go. Oh, that'll make it. That'll make it work. So if I give Engage to the Brute's 2 damage heavy, that'll do 4 damage because it's the first damage that's being dealt to the random creature. Will then easily take you out and then defend twice with the shield one duplicate from Prince. And this fight is already over. The enemy just doesn't know it yet. Fight two, luggage. Sorry. Okay. Here's here's how we're uh, going to format this, right? Uh. Uh, Dibbler. Okay, so one will just be I, because I'm not pronouncing D one B B L E R each time. Uh, two will be U, and three will be E. Right. So it's just substituting vowel sounds, which means we have the Lugage and the Curator. Uh, the Lugage has two signs that are shield cleave. One of them is magnitude three. One of them magnitude two, and then we have the Curator who has three steel sides. Oh, that's actually slapping. Oh, that's good. As well as one one damage rampage and one one damage error. The Lugage also has become immune to damage this turn for all of its HP. So anytime it takes damage, it can't take any more damage for the rest of the turn. Cool. Um, I really like the idea of taking Curator, and a large amount of the reason for that is because the Dibbler has good block sides, the Prince has one reasonable block side, Presence has a giant block side, it's very capable I can develop a huge amount of damage instantly with a single steal. So, sounds good to me. No need to twiddle, no need to scoundrel stash or anything like that, let's keep moving. Keep on schmoovin'. Hmm. There's the giant block from Presence. Oh! And there we go, the ability to turn it into damage. Ooh, this is great. Unfo oh no! Okay, so here's, here's a play that we unfortunately ruined for ourselves with the Scar. Which is that Presence has a... Sorry, Presence. Prisence, right? Is how I would be pronouncing this in my own uh, rubric. Prisence has add engage to a target side this turn. And if I add that engage to shield 4, and then the curator was not holding the scar, I'd be able to give them 8 shield in a single action. That said, I also don't think I need to do that. Because 7 damage is already enough to get the boar down to uh, concerning territory for its health. We'll take out that ball, and then we'll engage, defend the prisons. The B will sacrifice itself against us, leaving us just with the random monster, the archer, and the final B. Mm, this should work out pretty well for us. Cruel and Deathwish to target science's turn. 
Mm. That was only going to be relevant if I could do enough damage to the monster in the first place. Alas. We still managed to take out the B, which is fine. Gonna have to be enough at the moment. Ooh, our Aeroside finally comes up. One of the other reasons I'm really excited to have the Curator. And then the Prince is inspired to use his Greatsword appropriately. As the previous dice was higher, the Greatsword had a two, uh, times two effect on it. Reroll the class of Curator? No thank you. Doomblade and Compass. So Doomblade, replace blank sides with three damage, death. I die. And compass. Rotate sides clockwise around the middle. I like compass. I like compass a lot. Compass, at the very least right now, gives me the ability to maintain Prisence's side. That is to say, I can keep the cruel and death wish and also get the shield four from big shield simply by using the compass first. And I will move the Scar over to the Prince, who is just called Prince still in this, uh, this setup. Sounds good to me. All right, this turn's gonna go great. Looks like I'll have the ability to take out the ball that's currently threatening the presence. So that should be good. We'll give the Dibbler the ability to give six shielding to the Curator, who then knocks down the ball. Ooh. Oh no. That's not the character that's actually targeting the presence this turn, or rather, the second presence, the one that I need to defend. Do I want to give up the opportunity to do s this much damage to a single target, though? Because, like, yeah, I can do that. And then I can take out the rat, I guess. Sure, let's take a target off the field. This is probably a better idea. I suspect both tracks there would have led to victory, but... I'd still like to make the better choices wherever available. Let's give engage to this double damage error side. Start working on an enemy. Unfortunately, this next engage is not actually really going to provide anything to us. As the enemies, as in rather our characters that were being attacked that turn, had already taken damage, so... No benefit there for us. Ooh. Cruel and Death Wish. That'll work. Okay, if I give Cruel and Death Wish to Prisons, you can now defend yourself with Eight, because you're currently being overattacked this turn. Um, and the curator. Honestly, I should probably just take a target off the field, frankly. But I do feel like working on that boar is going to pay dividend. Prisons on the top sign. Very threatened right now. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of ways to do this. I think first is start working on the ball. Second... Actually, I mean, I can do more than that, but it's not going to matter. Because the engage side would give that more oomph. But if the prince has cruel targeting, then I can defend the prisons for four while healing it for four. A lot of health management in this build, and now I only need two individual instances of damage to move to the next fight. Is this fight number two? Did I seriously... Have I... Is... Fight three. Okay, well, we're ahead of Churchill then. Um, no, this is this is very slow. I need to start using my keyboard more. Clums? Sorry, Clumsy? 
Plumsy has one three damage cantrip side and the rest of them are blank. And there's also Lugage, uh, who we saw before. I do... It, I do, despite myself, really like the idea of Gloomsy. It only has to fire off once before it's insanely valuable. That said, Lugidge, who's capable of actually defending our characters as well as contributing towards our damage through the steel attacks on the Curator, it seems like the correct choice. Um, we'll I'm gonna rotate that and then give you the big shield so that Prisons can take the wooden armor. And we're up against Bramble, Rat, and our randomized monster. All of our sides are going to be single use in this fight, which I should keep in mind. Like, for instance, single use Rampage. Rampage is not going to be effective if, uh, sure, I can reuse the die, but I no longer have it because it was single use. Dang. Adding Cruel and Death Wish to a side this turn is going to do nothing. Um, annoyingly... What I think is the best targeting for my curator is actually probably not good at all. Here's the reasoning. If I use a steel side, oh, but I'm also using the armor this turn. It's just, I can do this, I can take out the rat, but then the prince still goes down to 1 HP this turn. I take one target off the board, but I've lost a lot of value. I wonder if I even have enough damage to push through the bramble. I hope so. Like, I'm keeping my shielding right now because, oh, oh boy. Oh no. Well, there we go. I have to spend all of that that turn just trying to stay stable. And you can see how our resources are dwindling the entire time we're doing this. Okay. Our only hope is in those... Uh, uh, in those smith sides. Sorry, smith. The uh, steel sides, rather. Steel sides and some defense. Come on. Oh, that'll do it. Okay, we give engage to the big shield. The big shield. No, we don't give engage to the big shield. We give engage to the curator. Curator, rather. Lugidge gives the curator big shield. And then we thump the enemy for 12 damage in a single hit because it's engage. Woof. That was better. I liked that more. Okay, we've got the kilt here. Copy the right side onto the rightmost side. Uh, not especially good right now, but I can see its utility. It's then there's Spinach. Start of turn one, self heal three. So if someone has died in the previous fight, rectify that for them. I'll take the Kilt, because I think it has a lot better potential. I'll use it to copy an additional Rampage on the Curator to start off with here. Up against a Barrel, a Goblin, two Quartzes, and our randomized monster. They're threatening to kill Prisons on turn one. How dare they? Uh, I'm gonna give engage so that the curator gets as large an effect from this as possible. And yeah, I'll actually give the curator slightly more and then take out the barrel, which will also take out one of the quartzes by doing exactly five damage to it. So it hits its insta die uh, threshold, as well as the goblin. 
I do like avoiding killing goblins wherever possible because they do flee if they're the final target available on the field, but oftentimes if you suspect the fight is going to go long enough, it just makes a lot more sense to kill them quickly. Speaking of suspecting the fight will go long enough, we generate basically no damage this turn. We start taking some weakens to our units though, so jazzed about that. Um... I'm gonna lock in damage on the Dibbler just while I have it. Let's take out the Quartz entirely, the single engage action. And then I can start quitling away the random monster. Vusel, what are you? So Vusel has uh, 10 damage death. And then, heal one, cleanse, one damage, death. So, you really want to die, is what I'm getting from this. And then you have the uh, ability, tvessel.adj.2, uh, which is two damage vulnerable. It spends a one pip side and a one keyword side in order to give two and vulnerable. Alternatively, we have the Vunum. Vunum has one side, which is one damage poison plague. Poison we're familiar with, but plague has plus one pip for each poison on all characters. And then two one damage ranged poison. I really like the idea of taking Vunum here, just for the fact that one damage range poison gives us the ability to start hitting the back line, which we already have difficulty with, as well as to work through stone health, which could become a problem as we get up to, you know, the slates and the sarcophagus of it all. I'll take that venom. And in fact, sorry, Vunum. And in fact, I'll give Vunum the, uh, the kilt so that we get an additional one damage ranged poison side. And now it's time to fight. Oh, this is, this is, I like fights like this, where enough different conditions could trigger at the same time. So what we have is the blind. At the end of the turn, if no damage was dealt to any monster, the blind will flee. So if we have a, a real whiff of a turn, we can at least do five damage by just letting the blind flee. Then, oh my god, this is sick. I'll talk about that in a second. Then we have the bandit who flees if an adjacent monster was overkilled by two or more, and then we have the Militia, who flees if the target they're attacking gets five plus shields. Incredible. Now also, we'll note here, the randomized monster is attacking the luggage and making it invulnerable. So is then the Militia, but the luggage is already invulnerable. Then the Bandit's attacking, but the luggage again is already invulnerable. Sick. Uh, Vunum, you can take your poison side, and we'll see what else we get. Lugage, you can take that, sure. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I probably do just want to let the blind flee. Two usable dice remaining? Yeah, I don't want to target them on anyone, thank you. I'd love to get that Poison Plague signed, but I'm not going to bet on it. Okay, that Militia is targeting Presen uh, sorry, Prisence. Wait a second. That's nine damage steal that we're looking to do here, which would overkill the Militia by two, so it makes the Bandit flee as well. Unfortunately, wait, hang on. I had miscounted in some way. Unfortunately, I will be losing the luggage after that, but I feel like that's pretty good of a position for us to be in at this point in time. Um, honestly, I'm not going to continue rolling. I'm just going to let that one resolve. I know that's enough damage to get the enemy to flee. Wild Seeds! Oh, this is exciting. Adds Undergrowth to the two left sides. Undergrowth. After use, the opposite side gets plus one pip this fight. So the opposite side from our leftmost is this. Well, actually, the opposite side from the leftmost is 
the right, from the middle, is the rightmost. So it's the one that would be on the opposite side of the net of this die. Or the, you know, the, the actual shape of this die, represented currently as a net. Uh, reason this is important, it means that if I do one damage ranged poison or one damage poison plague, I up these poison effects. Alternatively, as I do steal damage with the Curator, I up the effect of the damage rampage. So they are I, very useful, but in different scenarios. In this one in particular, I believe that putting this on Vunum will be better. Uh, we're up against two ogres and a random monster. Ooh, Lugia hits their best side immediately. Curator, please hit a uh, steal. It's fine if it's not the biggest steal of all time. It just has to be a oh, steal. Thank you. Um, and I'll take out the random monster. Okay, just the two ogres left to deal with. I want to continue pushing this roll. Bingo. And I'm not going to push too much further on Vunum, though. So I do think I have to sacrifice the luggage this turn as well, because I believe... I need to get... a ogre dead sooner rather than later. Otherwise, I'm going to be locked out of this fight pretty quickly. And then I can shield and shield. Woo! I've still got health. And the ogre is taking two poison damage each turn. I only have to generate six damage this turn. Cruel and death wish, honestly. Pretty likely to be used. Dang. I can beat the ogre. It just costs me all of my heroes except for the curator. Taint? Sorry, tainted. Tointed. Apologies. Tointed has one side that says shield, one cleave, no other side. So this is going to be a really good trade. On pick, gain a random tier zero hero. I mean, that'll split targeting and stuff like that. There's also Prunes. We can upgrade our Prince into a Prunes, who will now have a 3 damage inspired side and a Shield 4 that has Duplicate. Unfortunately, Shield 4 Duplicate can't really be used to set up for a... What's the word I'm looking for yet? For a Steel Damage side, because in using it, you will also overwrite the Steel Damage side you're intending to use because it duplicates itself onto all allied sides this turn. That said, the Prunes being able to generate six damage quite easily as well. It just requires that I've hit either my shield four or I've shielded the Curator and used the steel side that turn. That's a lot of damage you can generate. Mm. I think I might need the damage to get through this fight. I'm gonna give the steel sides undergrowth on curator and have the rampages grow larger because I suspect that will be relevant. All right. Agnes Githam McGrat and our randomized monster. I, I am kind of scared of this fight. I suspect this is going to be a, a real checkpoint for us right now. Okay, that's great. I immediately got the ability to knock one of the enemies off the field. And also, I can inspire! Oh my god! Okay, that's two of the primary em uh, enemies I'm going to be knocking off the field in this turn. Curator has the ability to do nine damage to a single target. If I target... Uh, McGrath, 
then neither Prunes nor Vunum will die. And in fact, that sets me up to be able to... Oh, but... If Agnes dies, then I will lose the luggage this turn. Sorry, the Lugage. I have to do that because I really don't want to push to another turn where she does a summon and I'm not capable of taking her out. I don't really have that much room left to stretch. So I've got Death Wish on the Prunes right now, which will give me the ability to attack Githa very effectively. Um, and our randomized monster has three health remaining. <laughs> All right, got to fight easy. No problems. Dueling pistol and dragon hide gloves. Dueling pistol adds duel to the left side times two versus those targeting me this turn, as well as the dragon hide gloves. Copy the middle side onto the top and bottom. great though. And we're up against two zombies, so I really want to be able to guarantee that I can do four damage. Easiest way for me to do that is to get the curator to have an additional uh, or multiple additional steel sides. I'll take the dragon hind gloves, give those to the curator. All right. Looking good. So we're up against two zombies that, if they take four damage in a single instance, will just die, as well as a carrier who starts poison for two. Since the carrier starts poison for two, Vunum's plague side already has two additional pips, so I'll roll a little aggressively hoping to get that. I rolled too aggressively. Well, I'm going to be losing Lugage this turn, but it will give me the opportunity to knock out one of the zombies, as well as up the poison on the carrier. I think that's definitely worth as well. Come on. Yeah, that'll have to do. Curator is still capable of doing 4 damage via Engage. Voodum continue taking out Carrier because they will be the most threatening. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna take out the Carrier. Unfortunately, I will be losing the Curator as well, as I didn't really have the ability to heal them anymore. Man, the Prunes really didn't want to roll their best sides this fight. 100 deaths! Unlocks a new hero, Roulette! I do lovely Roulette here. Uh, leftmost side is 7 damage, sticky, mandatory death. It cannot be rerolled, you gotta use it if you can, and if you do, you die. The other sides are also really good though. Two damage cantrip, two sides that do that, one that does five damage, and then two that do two damage in cleave. It's also worth noting, roulette covers the entire die. So benefits very much from a lot of different upgrades. Um, ooh, trade in all of my tier zero to three items for one random tier eight. So I lose kilt, but kilt will probably not become useful pretty soon because uh, because I'll lose prisons. No, wait, it's not kilt. It's uh, wooden armor would lose its relevance. Kilt is going to keep relevance, but I would have to lose it. That's sad. And I would also have to lose the big shield as well as the compass. I don't want to, but I will. Great sword. Replace the middle side with five damage inspired. And then, uh... Prawansons. 
Presence. Up into Spood or another Lugage? I mean, another Lugage actually would be pretty good for continuing the Curator's rule here. Spood does seem pretty cool also, though, as for one blank side and two damage pips, the ability to kill all enemies with two or less HP, as well as the ability to revive three allies, two allies, or one ally. I'm gonna go Lukic. Nice middle with five damage, inspired. The thing about that is I should probably also give the Dragonhide gloves to whomever uses that. So I'll get one of the Lugiches to have it. Oh boy. I'm gonna be losing the Curator. And Wiz is going to take damage at the wrong time, so they're not even going to be stunned next turn. That's actually pretty bad. What if I kept the Curator? I'll still lose Voonum. But at least now I won't feel... Uh, adrift and helpless. That'll do. Big hit. Big hit. And actually, I'm going to continue rolling because if the Curator can hit a steel side, we'll be so much better off. Perfect. That gives us the ability to murder, murder, and murder. Reroll the class of Lugage. Uh, just because of the synergy it already has with the Curator, I really feel like I don't want to do this. That's where most of my damage comes from. I'll go with a no on that one. Glyph of Purity. Add cleanse to the top and bottom sides. Reduce target's negative effects by uh, N. And there's also Monocle. Adds Engage to the center side. I do like the idea of that, but unfortunately I can't hold three items on the same character right now, so I can't have a five damage inspired Engage side that's duplicated to two sides. said engage is very useful. Oh boy. Oh, that worked out much better at the end. Thank you. Let's get some shielding here. The curator now has the ability to do seven to a single target which would be capable of taking out one of the Slimers wholesale. Let's also then start working on another one of them. We only lose two health on both of our Lugages. Two huge rolls right there. Vunum. I think I accept your one damage range poison sign on a second roll, but other than that, I push past it. Yeah. To regret it. That's the goal. I want to regret it soon. Um. Gotta save the prunes, so you are gonna have to attack the bones. Even if I would have preferred other targets. Yeah, because.
because unfortunately I can't save the curator with a different action, so... It is going to have to be... Uh, Blue Gidge removes Slimer. Prunes removes Bones. And then Curator, you can take some heat off of Prunes by taking out the Slimelet that's attacking them. Much more manageable now. I will take the backup, defend everyone as much as I need on Prunes there. Um, five to a single target. Attack, and then I am going to just shield. Actually, hang on. Take a target out, and then shield and shield. Just you and me, Slimer and Slimelet. And that'll do it. Victory! Plus, 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 plus. Unlocks an option. Uh, show rarity. Cool. So we have the Ali and the Brigand. So Ali has uh, heal and shield seven. Shield three, cantrip, shield one, cantrip, heal and shield two, as well as two sides that are one damage self shield. And then the Brigand has five damage self shield, three damage self shield, and then just three damage alone. Uh, the real value of taking the uh, Ali here is how effective it works with the Curator. Also, I can use Dragonhide to give you even more shield three cantrip sides, which seems good. Hmm. Yes, yes, I like this. Yes, this will do. Up against the Lich, three bones, and our randomized monster. Give me the ability to shield the hell out of Curator, please. That'll do it. That's all the shielding you could possibly need, Curator. Unfortunately, I'm not ranged, so I can't actually hit the enemy backline. I suspect one of the best things I'm going to be capable of at the moment is... Just trying to thwack a bunch of bones. Great signs being hit here. Keep the Ali alive as much as I can. Just start working on some of the bones in the front line. Unfortunately, the Lich has just weakened all of us by one and is summoning bones at quite a rate, much faster than I'm killing them. That doesn't bode well for our future. Unfortunately, I can't stop the Lugage, one of the Lugages rather, from dying this turn. It's okay, because if I target things optimally, I can stop the other Lugage from dying this turn. And all's well again. Ugh. <laughs> Shield to engage cleave. I'd love to be able to use that as an engage cleave. I won't be able to, but I would love to be able to. So we're only accepting one damage this turn. Hmm. 
Of course, we're all being weakened for the next turn, so... Still not thrilled about it. Ali is doing incredible work right here. Well, not necessarily towards the end of that turn, but definitely overall. There we go, taking out all of the bones, and now it's just the weakened us versus the Lich, who's trying to summon more bones this turn. Giving us a moment of respite. You get to do 5 damage directly to Lich's body. Unfortunately, now we have 3 bones on the field that we have to deal with, as well as Lich doing AoE. Oh, but I can also do AoE shielding, so... Your move, Lich. I love if I could get some poison on the Lich in the back line, but anytime I've actually rolled the ranged poison, I've also been weakened on Vunum, so I've not actually had the capacity to do so. There we go. I mean, the Lich still only has 9 HP remaining, but most of it has just been deaths of bones surrounding it. going to start hurting us. The Lich has petrified two of the sides for the Curator, so the Curator now has far fewer sides to access. The Curator also does have the error side that I would love to see pop up at any point. Curator, you can take out the bones and then continue attacking. Lugage unfortunately loses two of their sides. Still keeps the greatsword though. Come on, single instance of six damage, and that'll do it. That's the curator capable of doing that itself. And then the Lugage capable of following up. So we actually managed to get through that fight without losing anyone. The idol of uh, gives plus one max HP per consonant in the name. Uh, that's pretty effective. And there's also determination. On the first turn, you cannot die. Uh, that, that, would, that, that would decide some of my upgrades later. If I knew someone couldn't die. Random tier 6 item, maybe. You know what? Let's go random tier 6. Let's go wild. Hourglass. On the first turn, plus one pip to all sides. I'd love to put that on Venom, who really wants to poison for a lot on turn one. Sorry, Vunum again. Oops. Oh, that's so good. So Ali rolls the highest of the damage signs, giving us 9 damage on our Curator, who then will have the ability to inspire Lugage. Actually, Lugage is already inspired. There we go, we'll stun the Cyclops immediately. Actually, hang on. Take out the Ghost with that, because the Curator can hit the Cyclops. For 12 damage, rather than the 10 the Lugage would have done. Rampage seems totally appropriate at this point in time. I'd love to see some other damage, though. I really would have. Don't know who I expected it to come out of, though, if the Curator was already engaged. Alright, that'll do it. Boom. Well... Wait, if I take out the Cyclops, why is... Oh, Lugage is taking more damage after that? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I will continue rolling. I was going to stop rolling there because I could have. Uh, but no, it got slightly more complicated and now I need Lugage to actually roll. Oh, that'll work. 
Goodbye. Enemies. Hello. Peekits. So Peekits has plus two item slots to a maximum of four. They also have eight damage, single use. Heal 24, single use. Three damage, inflict exert, single use. So the opponent exerts that turn. And then one damage, inflict exert, single use yet again. That would buy us a lot of time. There's also the Feta, who has three damage on one side, five damage on one side, and then one damage on another. That does seem like a gambler by another name. Uh, Peekits. Uh, I'm going to take the um, the Feta, and here's the reason. I'm going to give you Monocle, and then I'm going to give you the Dragonhide Gloves. And now you have five damage engage on three different sides, which means on turn one, we will kill that Ogre, probably. I can't wait for us to on turn one kill that Ogre, probably. It's going to feel so good when that Ogre's dead, probably. Um, oh, there we go. That's the side that'll do it. Ah, thankfully, I can undo things so I can just redo that correctly. Yeah, let's have the snake take itself off the field here. I unfortunately don't have the ability to prevent the amount of poison that the Voodoo has already taken, but we will be getting out of this fight with a W. Thimble! Immune to damage during my turn, or a randomized item, and this is the joining of Enchanted Shield and Splitting Arrows. It has both of their effects at the same time. So at the start of each turn, shield self for one, and also replace the two right sides with one damage, ranged cleave. I think Thimble is probably more impactful, but maybe not. I don't have any pain sides yet. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna give it to the Lugidge who can attack. And then we'll, we'll see. Ten damage to a single target on turn one. Love the fighter. Take out that core for me, buddy. Actually, I could also avoid taking out the core and focus on getting an alpha off the field immediately. That seems like a much better idea. Sure, the alpha immediately summons a wolf, but things can be worse. It could summon another wolf next turn. And in fact, the other alpha will. I'll take seven damage. That's immediately killing a core. I'm not going to continue to roll, hoping that I get better than that for the ability to take out the alpha in the single turn. Um, Lugage, you already rolled basically as well as you can. Start poisoning the alpha. Yeah, without a core on the field, there's significantly less damage of a single unit taking enough damage to actually go down in a single action. I'll still take that one damage poison ranged. Why not? Oh boy. end up taking one more damage if I defend Lugage because it doesn't become immune after being hit for the first time. Um, immediately take one of the wolves out and I'll follow up poisoning the alpha yet again. 
Yeah, this will be a smooth fight. This is a boss fight? 15? Maybe. I don't remember when the boss fights are. I think you have five of them across an entire run, so at 5, 10, 15, 20, can't be those. So it'd be 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Which means this isn't a boss fight. <laughs> it's just very hard. Goodbye to the Alvan Wolf, and remaining is just you and me, you random C4A. You and I are in this together. Now it's just me. We have Tinder. Tinder 11 has a uh, 11 max HP, that is, has one side that 10 damage single use, has one side that's one damage single use, a one damage self mandatory, one self damage rather mandatory, another self damage mandatory, and then ttinder.adge.3. The tactic is two damage for any one pip. Alternatively, we can get the thief. <laughs> the thief has nine max HP, one six damage range side. That is actually pretty good, as well as a five damage side. Mm, that does kind of slap. I do really like poison, but between the um, the feeder and the thief, it's um one of the lesser known Hendrix songs, but between the theater and the, th uh, the, the, sorry, the theater and the thief, uh, we will have a very, very solid amount of damage to put out on the field. Uh, let's get that hourglass over on Ali. And I'll just accept the rest of those rather than push and possibly fail. Um, I'd love to start taking some targets off the field this turn. That'd be great. We're going to have to focus on the Troll King who has two regens. So if I don't really pour most of the available damage into it every turn, it will overwhelm me. Thankfully, we get the remaining damage to take it out, and then I can defend myself appropriately, and the fight's over. So that was the boss fight. That made sense. Unfortunately, because we're up against the slate and don't have poison, we're looking for just individual instances of damage. You ready to go down, buddy? Well, you shouldn't be so ready because it's going to take a while. Unless you run away! Thank you. Extra monsters! I would have to fight three slimelets at the same time on top of this entire board. That's pretty difficult for me. I don't have AoE. In order to get that, I would also be, or rather, I would also be gaining the pendulum, swap the left side and the middle side, the bone charm, no HP penalty when defeated, as well as the randomized item, tankard and sprinkles. Sprinkles is a zero tier item, so the main value here is tankard, adds acidic to the middle side. Sprinkle says violet heroes only. Yeah? What violet hero? Plus one pip to the left side. There's no violet hero as far as I know. I'm not going to be taking that. <sighs> Replace the middle column with shield one, repel, rampage, rescue. Singularity plus two pips to the two right sides. This is, this is just the Crescent Shield, but three times, and in arguably significantly better slots, I'm taking it. Gimme, gimme, gimme! Gimme. 
I don't expect I'm going to be able to get much value actually this turn out of the um, um, out of the Crescent Shield. So I'll actually just push. Cool. I was literally just looking for enough damage to take out both of the zombies this turn, and that'll work. All of the fanatics are seeing clear to take themselves out this turn, making my job much easier. Mm. I could see the Crescent Shield coming in use this turn, though. Yeah. So Crescent Shield defends the fighter. And then I'm going to attack the Fnatic. Defend the Thief. Losing the Fnatic. Start working on another creature. Yeah, at this point I just have to accept that I'm also going to have to deal with these two Fnatics on the next turn. That's fine. Spy. Sorry, Spin. Has 9 max HP, has 2 3 damage cantrip sides, as well as a 1 damage cantrip side and a heal 1. And then, tspine.adjective.3 for 1 blank side and 1 1 damage pip. You do 5 damage. That's a lot. And there's also the Huse Cat. The Huse Cat has 3 damage cleave, 2 damage cleave, 1 damage cleave, as well as the keywords. Sorry, the 5 damage inflict single use, which also requires only a blank side and one keyword side. Ooh, 5 damage inflict single use. That sounds really useful. Actually, Hughes Cat, you're gonna want the thimble this fight because otherwise you're not gonna be able to shield characters appropriately. Oh no! Chomp does one damage to the topmost enemy for each of its missing HP for the first round. That's fine, the Lugage will be able to block that and then the fighter won't really care about it. Yeah, I'll still keep this. Come on, Crescent. There's the Crescent. The Feeter already has the ability to take out one of the core, which is great. Now we can see the Hughes Cat not taking any damage to that. One core off the field. One randomized creature off the field. Oh, before I shield the luggage, sorry, the luggage on top. No, wait, I can't do that. Hang on. Yeah, because if I shield you, then you lose the attack against yourself that otherwise would have caused you to need to be shielded. Which means that if I use the lead to attack Chomp, then I can get the luggage back to a comfortable position for itself. Unfortunately, the next time I attack the Chomp, Lugage is going to die unless I pre-defend it. Although I could also just... chalk that up as fine. Hmm... 
Okay, I will be losing the Fita this turn, but that's fine. Actually, I probably prefer to lose the Lugage than the Fita. Well, never mind, I lose the, the, the feature anyway, whoops. Uh, fight 19, collar, add copycat to the top and the bottom sides as well as the dumbbell. Plus four pips to all sides that already have four or more pips. Um, copycat to the top and the bottom sides. It doesn't really seem like it would copy many very effective things for us. Like we could give cleave and cantrip to the he scat. I think the dumbbell probably makes the most sense and then just slapping that on the thief. And your job is now to just hit things really hard. really do want to be able to have all three items of the monocle, the dragon hide gloves and the dumbbell on the same character. Unfortunately, not possible at the moment. Uh, there's no armoring I have to worry about in this fight, so I'm actually going to give the Elise uh, plus one pips to all sides to the Heast Cat, so the Heast Cat can use it to block, as well as do a bunch of damage. There's a dragon egg here, which is going to be hatching. Okay, rarity is 2%. For you to find that enemy. Um, but yeah, it's going to summon a dragon and die. I obviously need to kill it before it does that because uh, it's summoning a dragon is nightmare mode. <laughs> That's when I start having bad dreams. Okay. So here's the thing, right? I'm going to kill that dragon, because I need to kill that dragon. I don't really get much of a choice about whether or not I kill that dragon. Um, unfortunately, the Heast Cat's not really going to be able to save anyone here, but... 5 damage. I had the ability to set up for the tactic, taking out the randomized monster on the top line who was making our life hell. Unfortunately, the Heast Cat is now inflicted with pain. I mean, I'd love you to be able to use the shield repel side this turn. I just don't think you can. We definitely want to try and take someone off of the board. I have the ability to take out one of the demons. And start working on another one, okay. Meanwhile, the demons are summoning imps, effectively just downgrading themselves. One of the imps is trying to die against my luggage. Rude. Um, Ali, you can try and keep the thief alive, despite the fact that they're about to use a giant attack. He's cat. Ooh, that's a problem. Someone's going to have to die to take out that imp. Oh no! I did not need to lose the house cat near the end there. The heast cat, sorry. Near the end there. Reflection! On pickup, gain a random tier 6 item, and it's tier 7 item, and a random tier 8 item. Also, Speed! All of the sides revive other heroes and they have plus two item slots maximum on themselves. Which is probably not right. But I could give them uh, the 
replace the middle line effect. Hmm. So I think reflection is likely to give me enough items to justify the fact that it is a blank side. I almost feel like I'm going to need the speed in order to deal with the amount of damage that Hexia deals back to us. No damage during our turn. So the fighter is always going to be attacking in melee, and they're also always going to be our lowest character on the field. I'm not going to get mana in this fight, so that's not going to be relevant. But the Feeter still does really want to be able to be immune to damage during its turn. I mean, so does the House Cat, to be fair. But the House Cat can also just be revived comfortably. In fact, all of them can. Um, the Speed really should have something that it's rolling for. Okay, I, I feel like giving it the shield rescue side feels most appropriate. Ah, but it'll also do a bunch of damage to itself with that. Alright. Well, let's go, Hexia. Four imps and the randomized monster on the field. Okay, Ali Cat has already rolled something that's going to be capable of saving a character. And I can even lose the Ali, sorry, the House Cat, He's Cat, uh, and then resummon it. That sounds great. So, I'm going to undo everything. I will keep the He's Cat. Uh, I'll continue rolling the spade because it, I would, I'd be fine with other results. But I'll stop rolling now. Then Thief, do 10 damage to Hexia yourself. And then you die. And then Speed brings you back. I can take out two imps this turn. And then give speed someone to revive next turn. I do really think that taking those two imps out is probably going to be, like, much more efficient than most other available options at the moment. damage, but I can summon back a Heescat, but the Thief and the Fighter, the Thief and the Feeter, rather, are both going down. Perhaps I should focus. As soon as Hexia is down and I'm capable of resummoning units, we're out of the fight. Like, it's done. The only problem is that's not going to happen this turn. Okay. He's cat. Give him the worth. Spade, revive everyone. Yeah, Hexia has unfortunately summoned uh, demons, is it every turn so far? And the demons themselves are summoning additional imps, so... They've been as nice as they can in terms of damage, it's just they've also been very deeply effective in ruining my life. Um, and that's that's rude. I don't... I, I feel like I should be in charge of ruining my life. 
feels like something I should get a say in. So first, the house cat is going to rescue the Ali, doing a little bit of damage, then itself, doing a little bit of damage, then the thief, doing a little bit of damage, as well as damage to itself again, so I can rescue the heast cat yet again. Maxia does need to just not exist on that field anymore. Unfortunately, it looks like I will lose the speed this turn if I do it that way. Hmm. Here's a better way to go about it, though. I can defend the speed taking out one of the demons, giving the Heastcat the ability to heal itself again. Then the thief can take out the demon, giving us the ability to again defend the speed. Then a Lee can defend the Feta so that I can again Defend. Unfortunately, the He's Cat can't protect anyone else without dying at the end of this turn as well. Which I'd really prefer to avoid. Hexia definitely needs to go down this turn. No two ways around that one. Let's use the thief to take Hexy out. The Feta to attack the demon. And then House Cat, you can defend yourself. Which will hit back. Speed, you want to take out that target. All right. Now it's just the speed, the Feta, the Ali, and three imps. I believe I'm getting through this one, especially if the speed happens to roll a multiple heal of any kind. The final imp is going to die against our speed. And that is an alternate hard victory. All right. All right, I got a taste for it now and I'm very keen to go into unfair. A surprisingly low amount of unlocks though from having done that. Yeah, we got the 100 hero deaths as well as 180 fights won. Strangely, I was suspecting a little more. Alas. I think next up we are due going back to a, a bit more of a basic run, so we'll hit up Shortcut, I suspect, in Unfair for the next episode. But until then, my name is from Rhapsody, the name of the game has been Slice and Dice 3.0. Top left is a series playlist for all my content of the game past, present, and future YouTube recommendations down below. Streaming past are the names of the people who are eternally supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash Rhapsody Plays. I'd love to thank you and a special thanks this episode to Mom. So hopefully you'll have been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you all next time.